Welcome to the channel and today we are going to be talking about 10 Forged in Fire kill tests. If you are a fan of Forged in Fire, make sure to leave a like on the video. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I release our daily videos. Now with all that being said, let's jump right into the video. Number 1. The Sika Sword. I'll take your Sika Sword and deliver killing blows on this ballistics dummy. Frank, you're up first. You ready? Hell yeah. Let's do this. I'm feeling good. Forged in Fire is well known for its bizarre assortment of weapons crafted in many of its episodes, and this short sword definitely belongs. The shape of this sword is quite odd but works well for piercing through flesh and is one of its most notable features which separates it from many other swords around it. Facts about the long dagger aside, in the episode the judges test each contestant's weapon, first putting it up against the kill test. Frank's blade goes up first, taking only two strikes against the neck of the dummy to slice through completely. The head ends up being sliced off clean, making it apparent that the Sika sword is not a weapon to mess with. Overall sir, your weapon will kill. Tony's blade just performs great on this thing, I mean. Number 2, the War Golox. I was able to put a few of my own personal touches in the handle. The five stars represent the Smiths in the competition. Matt, tell us about your blade. I had a rough time this week. The name alone makes the weapon seem powerful, and when looking at the weapon it can be quite an odd pair, but the strength of this Filipino machete is what helped it obtain its name. The War Gulok is the only sword that ever existed in the Philippines that did not have a point tip at the end of it, making it quite unique. When the contestants in Forged and Fire are asked to present the War Gulok of their own, they definitely deliver us both past the kill test. When the War Guloks were being used, they lacerated through the pig cleanly. One of the War Guloks even leaves the pig carcass severely damaged and hanging together by a bit of skin. That's your blade. First up, your edge is razor sharp. It lacerated easily through bones, through the spine, the one issue here is that you've a very blind Number three, the horseman's axe. Mike, Alex, welcome back to the forge. You've had five days at your home forges to work on your horseman's axes. Mike, tell us about your weapon. It's a little rougher on the edge. With a name like that, it looks like quite suiting for it. While the name alone is rather intriguing, the way they are presented and normally made is a factor to consider as well. Most horseman axes have a short curved blade at the front which is balanced with a hammer or spike often called a pick on the other side of the axe head. When the horseman's axes are put up to the kill test they easily pierce through the skin and puncture through the heart of the dummy, leaving blood behind before disemboweling the dummy and leaving behind a large slice in the stomach of the dummy. Well, Mike, let's talk about your weapon. Your edge over here is sharp. It lacerated deep into the bowels right here. Your spike definitely caved in. Number four, the hooded qatar. I've been looking forward to this. The hooded qatar. It's a big daddy of punch daggers. Nicholas, you're up first. You ready? Oh, yeah. If you haven't heard what a qatar is, it's a type of push dagger from the Indian subcontinent. It can often be identified by the age-shaped handle it bears. Now imagine putting a cover over the length of the handle and suddenly it becomes a hooded guitar. That's what the contestants were asked to make in this episode of Forged in Fire. When the guitar is used, it cleanly slices through the pig carcass and leaves behind large lacerations showing the blade is sharp and deadly. It even pierces through the pig beautifully. First up, with the kind of bounce it has, wherever I point, it follows with a tip. On its slashing, well, as you can see, pork chops. Your hood guitar. Number five, the Glaive Goose Arm. Your weapons will now be put through a series of three tests. Up first, kill test. Doug? See what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I'll take This weapon closely resembles a Chinese staff sword, also known as a Dao to some, and the Guan Dao, a type of Chinese pole weapon. While being of European descent instead of Chinese, there isn't much information online about the sword, but that it consists of a mix of other sword types. When the Glaive Goose Arm is put up against the test, they are shown to have a razor sharp edge. One of the weapons even cuts the deer carcass in half with two slices, leaving the bottom of the deer dangling from the hook and the rest lying on the floor. First up, right here on your edge, it picked up a chip. On another side of this, you can feel where the edge also rolled. 
Number 6. The Wind of Fireblades Each of your weapons will now be put through a series of three tests. There will be a strength test, a sharpness test, and up first, the kill test. Doug? A ring normally is something that you have placed around your finger for decoration, but these ring-shaped blades are used in close combat. The Wind of Fire wields are melee weapons wielded as a pair and associated with the Chinese martial arts such as Bagua Shang and Tai Chi. Once the weapons are presented to the judges on Forged in Fire, they are put up against a kill test. The blades end up tearing apart the pig carcass, they rip through the skin and leave the pig torn apart. All right, I like the construction here, it's unique. I've never seen this done before. Number seven, the Swaihander Sword. But until it's really put to the test, you just never know. The sword's name is quite a mouthful, but it's quite the beautiful blade. The Swaihander Sword is a large two-handed sword that was primarily used during the early decades of the 16th century. It's quite a long blade and when put up against a sharpness test, it cuts beautifully. It's quite a long blade and when put up against a sharpness test, it cuts beautifully. Both swords end up passing the sharpness test, cutting many of the sugarcane poles and leaving considerable damage behind. When put against a kill test, each sword goes through the dummy with ease and disembowels the stomach with one strike. One of the blades end up hitting the ribs of the dummy on the first strike and completely disembowels the dummy, showing how deadly the weapon is in combat. The Swihander was a weapon of war. Big weapon, big damage. I will take your weapon and deliver killing blows on this ballistic dummy. Let's see how much damage your weapon Number 8. The Pipe Tomahawk. A beautiful weapon when crafted well, the pipe tomahawk is just that. A smoking pipe mixed with a tomahawk. Either Native Americans or European Americans, it was adopted from an original tomahawk into the mix of the two. On Forged and Fire, the judges put the tomahawks through the smoke test, the kill test, the strength test, and the sharpness test. Funnily enough, they put it through the smoke test, testing the smoke pipe and finding they work perfectly. Now when they are put up against the kill test, they pierce through the pigs, leaving deep marks in the pigs, slicing through them with ease. Awesome. These are made to chop deep, it's easy to maneuver and deliver that kind of damage. Overall sir, your weapons? Will Number 9, the Grim Reaper Scythe. This is the kill test. The Grim Reaper uses the scythe to harvest the souls of humans when it's their time. To test the lethality of your scythe. As far as this shows many weapons of choice goes, the thought of seeing a bizarre weapon doesn't surprise us anymore. But when the contestants are asked to present a well-crafted Grim Reaper scythe, it becomes clear that we are in for a real treat. Now, to be clear, the scythe is an agricultural hand tool used for mowing grass and cutting crops. Whilst on Forge and Fire, it isn't exactly used for cutting any crops or mowing grass. They use the Grim Reaper scythe to cut open realistic human dummies. When the scythes are used, they end up piercing through dummies, causing notable damage and showing off the strength of the scythes. When used, they go right through the dummies making sure to show how deadly these weapons can be. Number 10, the Sande Spear. Gentlemen, your Sande Spears look deadly, so let's find out if they really are in our weapons test. Up first, the kill test. Doug? Bladesmiths. Spears are probably what you think of when you're trying to describe deadly projectiles. They were used all of throughout history and often when fishing. Now, for the Sandy Spear, most definitely a deadly weapon of choice. Now, the Sandy Spear consists of an iron spearhead with a rounded tip and narrow blade, gradually expanding its base, which ends in two long downwards pointing barbs with the tip of one broken off. With a description like that, no wonder it was used in the late 1800s. 
Now, when these spears are used in the kill test, the damage they inflict is deadly. Both spears presented end up tearing the inside of the dummy apart and show how sharp the spears are. They pierce straight through the skin of the dummy and rip out parts of the face organs. They tear apart the dummy with ease and show their deadly nature. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, then hitting the like button would be heavily appreciated. You can also hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to see more content just like this.